trees. We generally don't give them much thought. But truth is, trees and forests in particular are essential to life on this planet. Think of forests as Mother Nature's lungs, taking in the primary greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, locking it away in wood and soil, and giving off oxygen. Sadly, forests, particularly tropical rainforests, are being cut down at the astounding rate of 31,000 square miles a year. That's an area about the size of South Carolina. And that's terrible news for everything that breathes because those same forests produce 40% of Earth's oxygen. Over the past 100 years, 90% of Hawaii's native forests, forests filled with koa, ohia, mamani, nayo, and sandalwood, home to hundreds of endangered species, have been lost too, cut down to make way for big agriculture and ranching. Then, about seven years ago, on the island of Hawaii, Jeff Dunster and Daryl Fox came up with a plan to start turning things around, one koa tree at a time. Koa, one of the world's most valuable hardwoods, grows only in Hawaii, and because of its scarcity, its price has risen a thousand percent in the last ten years. So creating a new koa forest sounded like a pretty good investment. But Jeff and Daryl's dreams went way beyond potential dividends. The idea was we wanted to be able to put back an endemic forest and make it economically sustainable because up until now, the, the, the model that people use is find a forest, cut it down, and sell the wood. And of course, that's not sustainable. It isn't just about taking a tree and turning it into board feet and selling it somewhere. It's about what that tree does when it's alive, and that's, that's the value that most people miss. When we set this investment up, we told our investors right up front, um, we're gonna be overcharging you for what we're putting in the ground because you're only a small part of what we're trying to accomplish here. That for every tree that we charge you for, we're actually charging you enough where we could put a total of four trees in, and the other trees nobody gets to touch, and that they're left in perpetuity. And the investors were absolutely fine with it. Matter of fact, uh, most of them were thrilled with the idea because the idea of giving back and leaving something behind is, is important to all of us. But koa trees are site-specific. You can't take trees from one island to another and expect them to grow. For this plan to work, some remnant of the original forest had to be found. Originally, it was the private koa forest of King Kamehameha the Great, which was the first king of Hawaii. There wasn't much left up there that resembled anything that it originally looked like. And what we found, though, was in the gulches, the areas that were too steep for the cattle to get into and too dangerous for the ranchers to want to go and clear, we found remnants of these forests, these old growth trees. The, the genetics still resided on the property. And so we found young, strong men and women, braver than us, to go and start to collect these seeds, and that's what we used to propagate. And the forest has come back with a vengeance. But if one in four trees in the new forest will be harvested, how can you tell which tree is which? Information technology. Each and every tree is given a radio frequency identification tag when it's planted. The tag connects the tree to a sophisticated global positioning and identification system. The data aid scientific research and track the day-to-day -day health of each tree. Go online using applications like Google Earth and Zoom In. When you plant a tree, you can always find it. And if every single tree can be tracked, why not let more people participate and sponsor trees one at a time? Welcome to Online Reforestation, LegacyTrees.org. The process is simple. For $90, you can arrange to have Hawaiian Legacy Reforestation Initiative plant a koa tree in your name or the name of anyone you want to designate. Use the tree as a gift or to mark a special occasion, remember a loved one, or simply share your aloha for these islands. For a $110 donation, plant a sandalwood tree. $20 of every donation will be sent to a charity of your choice. 
To date, Legacy Trees helped support over 300 nonprofit organizations. When we started this Legacy Tree program, it was almost immediately where people were calling and said, you know what, I, spon I live in Oklahoma, I sponsored a tree online, my wife and I are gonna be in Hawaii, can we come visit the tree? I said, sure, come on up. Well, there was two things that were gonna happen. Either we were gonna go into the um, eco-tour business or we were gonna go broke giving away free tours. And so we created uh, Hawaiian Legacy Tours where people could go up and see their trees and then that naturally grew into, gee, can we plant one while we're here? So within 10 months, we were actually were named the number one eco-tour in the state by the Hawaii Ecotourism Association, which was a shock and an honor at the same time for us. Your legacy tree adventure begins 40 miles north of Hilo in tiny Umikoa village, nestled 3,200 feet up the broad slopes of Mauna Kea. Pull into the visitor center, a hundred-year-old farmhouse, and meet your guide. Over tea and homemade scones, use a tablet to fill in the information that will personalize your tree. Each legacy tree comes with a certificate of sponsorship detailing the tree's ID number and GPS location. Roam outside to the nursery, browse your way through the saplings, and choose the koa that will become yours. Now board the ATV and hang on! The 30-minute trek, bumping your way up through tall stands of eucalyptus and rolling meadows to the 5,000-foot high planting area, that is worth the price of admission on its own. An e-ticket ride if ever there was one. Everywhere you look, there are the bleached bones of large koa that once inhabited these slopes. Then, up there on the right, is a mighty survivor. The word koa means warrior in the Hawaiian language, and this giant has battled on for decades. This morning, other Legacy Tree sponsors are flying directly to the day's planting site via Paradise Helicopter. This clean, green company offsets its carbon footprint by planting Legacy Trees and they give their clients an opportunity to help as well. It's a great opportunity to have a, a green vacation because you can buy a green tour or a charter and uh, we'll plant the trees for you or we can bring you up and, and plant the trees. We also just started where instead of paying money, you can actually buy trees and if you buy a certain number of trees, you can get a seat on a helicopter for a tour and the Hawaii Legacy Hardwoods will plant the trees for you. Planting just one legacy tree can absorb enough carbon to offset a one-week vacation in Hawaii for a family of four. In fact, carbon credits will ultimately provide long-term funding for the legacy forests. It works like this. Okay, I'm a polluter, and you're planting trees, which is the opposite. You're, you're removing pollution. I would like to buy what you've generated to offset what I've consumed. And if you think of carbon like a crop, it's an invisible gas that gets sequestered by a tree. I know it's a little bit heady to think in that direction, but it actually has value. So our 50-year carbon project will effectively produce enough income for that forest to maintain itself without any outside person having to write a check for the next 150 years. Mitigating global warming is everyone's kuleana. So in an effort to become more carbon neutral, a number of organizations are planting their own mini forests within the larger legacy forest. The Four Seasons Hualalai has committed to planting half a million trees, while the Miss Hawaii organization plants a tree for every contestant in the national pageant, offsetting everyone's travel footprint. When you stand up there and you see 400,000 trees that are planted and you know Every one of those trees has a story to tell. That becomes humbling when you start thinking about the amount of effort that went in uh, to make that happen and that, that uh, so many people have been involved in this thing. E hookipanei mako me ka haha. Mai, e mai, e kamo mai ki a aina o umikoa. Hawaiian culture teaches that each of us has a responsibility to malama aina, care for the earth, and before entering the forest, oli, or chant, focuses our thoughts and helps us connect to this incredible wahipana and the importance of what we're doing. Walk slowly through the tall grass until you discover the perfect spot, 
your tree's home for the next hundred years or so. Your guide will help you dig a small hole and place the sapling in the moist, dark soil. Watering the tree as you wash the dirt from your hands adds your mana, or spirit, to the land. This connection you've made to Hawaii and her future is a lasting one. For visitors, this is an opportunity to plant your family tree, leave a legacy, and actually become part of Hawaii's history in the return of the forest. For Kama Aina, it's an opportunity to embrace their culture, their home, their heritage, and to leave something for the next generation. We uh, started this uh, legacy forest seven years ago, and this month we planted our 400,000th tree. Some of the trees are 60 feet tall already and a foot in diameter. We've seen the return of uh, endangered birds. The Hawaiian hawk, the eel, has returned. It's not only out there and hunting and living, but they're nesting and breeding. This particular area is nearing completion, and we just announced a second location on Hawaii Island uh, in North Kohala, which would be a 700-acre forest that we would start with there. We're also expanding to Oahu on the North Shore with a 500-acre forest. This is sustainable development in its simplest form. Forests were green when green was just a color. Our goal is we want to have legacy forests on all islands. For me, I think the message is we all can make a change, and it doesn't have to be very big. There's enough of us that if we each do a little bit, the change will happen. Plant me a tree.